Hello again SketchUp users and fitted furniture designers. In this video I want to show you how to very quickly add a range of mouldings to your model by using a library that I've just put the finishing touches on which was dealing with a pain point of my own where I found that often I just couldn't find the right moulding or if I'd drawn one I hadn't been disciplined enough to put it in a, a library where I could quickly find it again. I find it very helpful to have quite true to life mouldings for the, the UK market so I can show my customers the skirting that they already have and they can see exactly how our skirting will butt up against it for example. Same with the, um, the cornice and the coving in rooms. I just like to be able to represent things as they really are and to do it quickly. So if you look at the links below this video you'll get a download to this set of mouldings. These are ones that I've built up over the years and they really cover Pretty much every scenario because some of them can be scaled to be near enough to um, like a non-standard coving or something like that. So I'll tell you how to use them starting with native SketchUp tools and then showing you an even faster method using a plugin called Profile Builder. But just to cover a pain point that you may have come across, sometimes if you've drawn a moulding and it's ended up broken apart into, into facets, as can happen in SketchUp, it can happen in slightly unpredictable ways. You may find then that when it's extruded, either by push-pull or follow me, you get these, these lines appearing. Now there is a fix to that once that's been turned to a 3D extrusion. You can go to soften edges, either over here or by right-clicking, you can bring it up as well. Soften and smooth edges, and you've got a slider here which will just hide those edges depending on the angle they meet at. But it's not always totally reliable and it'd be best not to do it. So the way to avoid that in the first place is to, is to weld the edges together. So you see we've got the problem here as well where that, that arc, which is still an arc, meets the straights. But if we just select those lines before extruding, so holding down shift and clicking, and I hit spacebar by the way just to go back to the pointer. So having selected those adjoining lines, if you go to right click and weld edges, that will make SketchUp consider that as one continuous line so you won't get those breaks extruding out. I've taken the time on all these mouldings to do that so you can be sure that any one that you jump into and extrude is going to work as it should and look tidy. All these little things save time in the final modelling. I'm going to start now by showing you how to bring this into your model when you've gone to the download. I'll just delete this out. Having downloaded it to your desktop or whatever folder you want to put it in, you'd go to your components browser, which may look different if you're running this on a Mac. Details here, open or create a local collection. And this is the folder. So don't click any deeper into that folder, just select that. And what you'll get here is this component, which you can just click once and bring in. And also this folder of individual mouldings, which I'll show you uh, just after this explanation. First thing to do, having brought in all the mouldings, is right click and explode. Don't explode more than once. These now are loose geometry, they're not individually grouped, because this works best for this way of doing it. So let's just have uh, drawing without any mouldings on. If you were going to use the SketchUp Follow Me tool to apply, say, the, the coving around the top of the room here, you would need to first define your path with the pencil. So forgive me if I'm jumping about quite quick. I went to the pencil tool over here, but uh, I did it with a, a keystroke, which is L, L for line. So if you see tools changing, maybe just slow down, rewatch, and I'll try and explain what I can. So L for line, that's certainly to the pencil tool. So I've defined the, um, <clears throat> the path there, and I had to do that because I'd grouped the walls. Follow Me wants to find loose geometry that's not already grouped, so I've just, I've just redefined the path there. What I then want to do is bring over the coving that I want to map to that, so I can just select the face, I don't actually have to select the edges because if I select the face and copy it over it will it will bring the edges as well. So just tapped M on the keyboard for the move tool. Um, click on this top point here and then 
in Windows tap Control or in Mac tap Alt. You can do that before or after the move operation and that makes it a copy move. So I'm going to then put that onto the path that I want it to follow. And now for the follow me tool to work correctly, I need to select the path, but not select the face that's going to be extruded along it. I find the easiest way to do that is to triple click, which should select all the geometry that's touching, that's not grouped. And then I just hold down shift and drag a box to bound the face that doesn't form the path. So if you drag from left to right, that will deselect that face as long as the shift is held down. So then you can go to follow me. And although it's now deselected that path, it knows that's the path that you wanted this to apply to. And the face that you click now will just follow around that path. And it'll take care of the, the joins, the mitres. Best practice then would be to triple click again just as a way of selecting all of that and then to group it because leaving ungrouped geometry can get you into trouble. So you can carry on that process for all the other mouldings that you need to do here but there is a much quicker way and that is using the profile builder extension. I've already downloaded and installed it so if you choose to do that this is what you'd see extensions profile builder 3 and all we're going to look at here is the profile dialog. Now from here you can access various mouldings from the library that I'm making available to you. They're all organised. They're the same ones plus quite a few extra that you see in the, uh, the component where they're all grouped together. And the power of Profile Builder is you can define the entry point of the moulding, which is that dot there, and various other, various other parameters which give you a lot of power and also speed about bringing these um, these mouldings in. If you want to go down that route, then be aware there is a price for Profile Builder, and this price allows for the fact that it's a very sophisticated plugin and it does a lot more than what I'm showing you. You can set it up to auto-generate bridges and fences and things like that. So you'd go to this link, which you'll find below if you did want to buy it. If you choose to set it up, then go to Preferences here under Extensions and Profile Builder 3 and make sure that this folder called Profile Library is set to the Freebird SketchUp Mouldings folder. You would at this, at this stage click in a level now to, to this subfolder within it. So just make sure that's set, go to OK and then when you go to Profile Builder and Profile Dialog now, all that means is when you go to your search up here to find a profile and then tap Home, your home now is all of these library folders that I've created for you. So let's say we're going to do a cornice. I've set some up the way that we build them. So this one, for example, will buy in a timber profile like this, but in the workshop we'll pre-fit to the back of it just an MDF 18mm thick by 90mm wide strip, just because that allows us to very easily screw that down on top of a unit. I've also preset it with an insert point, which is just where I want it to land. So I could change that insert point, as you can see. The bottom middle works for this one. What I then want to do is use this button at the bottom here. Click on my start point, snapping to the geometry here. Here's where it's going to mitre, turn the corner, final click, and it's going to sort out that junction. And then I just have to hit escape, and that's built. So that's a lot faster than using follow me where you have to predefine the path. It also is ready grouped. And on top of that, there is layer information already embedded in this component. 
So I've already set all these components, whether they're cornice, skirting or whatever, I've set their layer to come in according to what they are. And what you'll find then in your layers or in the latest version of SketchUp, it's called tags. You'll find that those now will appear even if they weren't already there. So now if I make cornice invisible, then that disappears. So Profile Builder allows you to automate processes like that in your drawing, um, but perhaps most of all, just to very quickly add these profiles. I've set the insert points already. So say if you want to go to skirting and perhaps you want a seven inch torus, I've labeled them all carefully for you so you see exactly what's what. And you see I've set the insert point there at the bottom left because that's what you would want for this. Go to that button down there and then you can just go ahead and add it. <clears throat> now be aware that the way it works is whatever direction the path's moving in, it will, it will map that to the path. So say if I'd started this round here, it's still going to work correctly. You will find with the architrave profiles and door moulding profiles that it's, it can be a little bit harder to get your head round and a bit of experimentation will needed to make those map correctly depending on the orientation of the face that you're applying them to. Sometimes you might find it easier just to go back to your library items here. And so for example, for the architrave, you just grab that. There's different ways you can select it, different ways you can copy it across, but I've just lasso selected the whole thing there, tapped M, tapped Control on Windows to make it a copy move. And then I've just put it down here against this wall. I'm going to define the path, because I'm just using the native SketchUp tools now, define the path so that I'm not having to go right into that group and stick it onto the, the, the surface within the group. Again, triple click. So I've selected the path. Hold down shift and lasso select just to deselect the architrave profile. <clears throat> and we go to follow me, click on it, and that's going to follow up around there. So I do sometimes find that that works better than Profile Builder because you have to get a little bit clever with Profile Builder on the architraves when you're following around. You can play around with that, um, but take it from me, I've just found it a little bit more difficult sometimes than when I'm following sort of straight along horizontally. <clears throat>